This is what the marine board looks like after I've marked uh, both chassis. This is the uh, rear portion of the chassis. This is the front. I'll go ahead and uh, cut this out the uh, thickness of the chassis and uh, test fit and go from there. The center line will make both plates match up as far as wheelbase. The bottom line will match up the width of the cage. This is what it looks like with both plates cut into the marine board. Or pedestal that was connected to this rear plate, uh, the part that we're not going to use anymore. I had to lower the steering arm, steering link, steering arm. And now it'll work just perfect. But I found a better solution. The uh, Hobby Kings BRS uh, BZ444 four wheel drive buggy, uh, the non pro edition. The uh, housing, the uh, output pinion shaft come straight out uh, where as this one is angled up and caused me to have to lower this in order for this to work. Well if I put in the other housing where the pinion comes straight out I can put this back to stock where it is the strongest. Uh, with it angled down here it does work uh, but there is a little flex and I would like to eliminate that so this system will work but eventually I can see it possibly breaking uh, using the alloy steering connector would help steady that but I would rather it be stock so I'm gonna take all this back out put this back to stock and swap out the diff housing. In order to make this all function and work correctly, um, I have, uh, I am still using the stock rear arms. The stock rear arms are longer than the front, so I needed to include longer CVD shafts. Uh, these happen to be ProLine Pro 2, uh, the used spare that I have for the for my ProLine. And in order for that to work, I needed to swap out the input shafts in the differential with a little shaving and including another groove for an E-clip. I was able to put in the Pro 2 uh, ProLine input shafts and use the uh, ProLine cups. So now this unit will work just fine. On the center differentials um, I also used a ProLine Pro 2 input shaft to accept a uh, telescoping drive shaft. I replaced the cup with a shaft only. And the same principle applied to the other diff. I just needed to shave the flat edge of the ProLine Pro 2 sh input shaft and cut a groove into the shaft for the E-clip. And it'll work just fine. Now I'm almost to the point of including electronics and cutting the uh, marine board to accept a roll cage and that'll be the next step. In order to get the steering component to fit inside the arm I had to shave a very little off in order to get it to slide in. The upper deck plate uh, using the stock 
front upper deck plate. I used an all thread, made an all thread, and used epoxy to fill in the gap. I needed to lengthen it in order for it to work with this uh, rear section. And so by doing that, um, I was able to use the uh, stock 102 millimeter front shaft. So both sections, both front sections now will accept the 100 and two millimeter front shafts. If you see the front differential here, inside here, it's tucked in a lot shorter than this rear. You see how long, how much longer it is. So for some reason the geometry come out without cutting this rear section the 102 millimeter shaft dog bone will work another thing I would like to change since this is now a front end I would like to put the alloy arm connector in at least in the front uh, portion So the rear diff from the BZ444 worked out great. Uh, as you can see, the shaft comes straight out. And the steering can be mounted into the stock position. Works great. Now with the uh, turnbuckles figured out, um, I needed uh, two more turnbuckles in order to complete this rear section. Um, I did get the bumper mounted to stock position. Turned out great. I did swap the rear arms back to uh, left to left, right to right. Um, I didn't want to drill any more holes for shock mounting and, and it'll work out just fine. Um, I do however got to get the correct shock because if I don't do that the uh, input shaft CVD shaft hub can hit the arm on the cross brace here so I might have a little bit of shaving to do if necessary and it'll be okay so how I figured out the turnbuckles um, I downgrade downsize the turnbuckles on the stock front end. Um, I did not need the servo turnbuckles anymore so that helped me uh, be able to finish this. Uh, these are actually the servo turnbuckles. The, this is actually the steering turnbuckle. So that gave me an opportunity to put the stock turnbuckle, steering turnbuckle, on the front, on the rear, that's now front, and the uh, C-hub turnbuckle is the stock C-hub turnbuckle, but it's mounted to the outer hole to help with the length. So this is all great now. Um, the servo turnbuckle is from a crawler rear end, um, a two-wheel drive crawler. This holds the uh, axle steady so it doesn't steer. Well, I made it four-wheel steer, so I didn't need these anymore, and they worked out great on this. Um, I ended up cutting the width of the uh, cage out of this marine board so I could make me some mounts for the servos, and we are pretty much ready to cut this thing in half, put the cage on, and start a rocking and a rolling. Now this uh, upper deck plate, that is off the BZ444. It happens to be the same uh, length and everything, so that was cool. So all that's left now is uh, shocks, and uh, 
I can see on here that if I go too much, the CVD shaft's going to rub the hub. If I wanted to, I could shave that off gain a little more, but this isn't a monster truck, so I don't need to do that. Um, how I measure for proper shock length is I will measure the shortest distance, and the shortest distance is the uh, both upper and lower inside holes. So I'll take my caliper, and I will measure top hole to top hole, and that will give me a center hole measurement. come out to 105 so I need a shock that is a hundred and five millimeter center hole to center hole and that will that is uh, actually some very good uh, uh, suspension travel the stock shock is uh, 80 millimeters so that's pretty cool all right so Let's split this thing in half and start on the cage.